Hey there guys, we are going to keep working today with compound figures, their area and perimeter. Remember those were things like this, where you kind of had to look at them as two rectangles put together. And we're going to work on area and perimeter of those in some other situations today. So go ahead and write this as the title of the next page in your math notebook. And when you've done that, close it up and give me your concentration. So yesterday we found the area and perimeter of figures like these. Um, to find the perimeter was still super easy. All I had to do was work my way around the figure and add all the sides up because that's perimeter's distance around. So we just said it would be 34 plus 8 plus 7 plus 12 plus 20 plus 12, plus 7, plus 8, and then I'm back to where I started. So that's all the sides, and I would add those all up. Let's see, 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 38, 8, 36, 7, 8, 9, 10, and this had a perimeter of 108 feet. To find the area of it, I, I have this length times width formula for area, which is super handy, but that only works for rectangles. And this is certainly not a rectangle. So what we did yesterday is we imagined dividing it into two different rectangles and saying, oh, okay, well, I can deal with that. You know, this one, then like I can find the length times the width of this one and the length times the width of this one and then add them together and I'll have the area. So this top piece, so the area of the top is 12 times 20. Uh, 12 times 20, which is 240. And then the area of the bottom is 8 times 34, length times width. So 34 times 8 is 240 and 32, so 272. And then I just ask, so now I'm going to erase these out of here. So I found these areas. And I had 240 square feet here, 272 square feet here. So all together, that would be 2, 11, 512 square feet. So we're going to do the same thing today, except some of the lengths of the sides are not going to be given to you. Like if we want to find the area and perimeter of this figure, You'll notice I don't know this, and I don't know this. So when I find, in order to find the area and perimeter, I'm going to have to figure out how long these two sides are first. So let me show you how you do that. If you look at this, let's start with this top one. Let's just, we have to figure out how far that is. The reason they don't tell you is that you can figure it out from the other sides, because you'll notice here, I know that this is 15, and I know that this is 4. So if you imagine up here, if I were to extend that all the way to here, and make this like one big rectangle, this part would match this part. So this would be 4. And this whole thing, from here to here, would match 15. So I, if, if this whole side is 15 and this much of it is 4, then I can figure out that this part that's missing must be the rest. So this, is this whole thing is 15 at the top. Let me make that more clear. It's not that piece is 15. It's this whole thing is 15. 
it's 15, and then this is the question mark part. So I can figure out from there that this must be the other 11 from there. Let me show you how to do that one more time. So I'm looking here and saying, okay, this bottom is 15. So if I were to extend this side to match the bottom, this whole part from here to here would all have to be at be 15 because it would match that bottom part. And I can tell here this part of it's 4. And so if this part of it's 4 and the whole thing is 15, I can figure out that the other missing part must be 11. Because 11 from here and 4 from here would make the 15. That's the whole part. So now I found that missing side. And let's figure out this missing side over here. All right, so I'm going to kind of use the same tactic to figure that side length out. I'm going to say, okay, well, if this side continued all the way to the top, from here all the way up to here, it would match this side. I would make the same length side as the other one. So that's 10. And I know that this part of it is 6. And if this whole side would have to be 10 and that is 6, then I know that this other part must be 4. So that the 4 from here and the 6 from here make the whole 10. So now I know my missing sides. And now it's no problem to calculate the area and the perimeter. The perimeter, I think I'll start here, is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 11 plus 10 plus 15. Let's see, that's 10, 14, 15, 19, carry the 1. And it looks like a 49 meter perimeter. And then area, I can't use my length times width formula because I don't have a rectangle. But I can use my length times width formula if I divide it into two rectangles. So this top one, area equals length times width. The length is, I found it, I calculated it to be 11. And the width is 6. So that has an area of 66 square meters. And then this bottom rectangle has a length, area equals length times width, has a length of 15 and a width of 4, which I had to calculate. Notice I don't even have it on this side. I wrote it on this side, which is 60. So this bottom part has a 60 square meter area. And all together, that is 126 square meters. All right, so that's it. Once you find those missing side lengths, the process of figuring out your two answers is the same. Let's do this one together. So if you'll notice on this one, I'm missing two side lengths. I'm missing this and I'm missing this. So let's go through the process of finding those first. Um, so first things first, this side. So this whole side is 12 right here. So if I were to extend this side, the entire thing would be 12, right? This part of that 12 is 7, which means this part, which is the same as my question mark part, that would have to be the other 5. 7 and 5 makes 12, so I know that this is a 5-foot piece. All right, let me erase my other stuff here. So I have room. So now we want to figure out this one right here. 
So same process. This bottom is 11, which means if I were to extend this top, it also has to be 11. Well, if this is 3 out of the 11, then this must be the other 8. 8 plus 3 makes 11, so this is going to have a unit of 8. And then, now, I'm ready to do it. The perimeter, I'm going to start here, I think, is going to be 7 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 12 plus 11. Let's see, 15, 20, 25, 26, and 4. So I have a perimeter is 46 feet. Got that. Now all that's left is to find the area. So the area is going to have to be added here because I, I can't use my length times width formula because I don't have a rectangle. But I can make two rectangles right here. Um, this piece can use the length times width formula. So it has a length of 3 and a width of 5. 5 times 3. So this has an area of 15. And then the bottom, area equals length times width. It has a length of 11 and a width of 7. So it has an area of 77. So my area is 15 square feet plus 77 square feet, which all together is 92 square feet. And that, my friends, that is how you find the area and the perimeter of a compound figure when you have to figure out some of the side lengths before you do it. Hope that wasn't too bad. If it was, please go back and watch the I Do and the We Do again so you have total command of this when you get to class tomorrow. Once you have good notes, including how you got that 5 and the 8, how you got those missing side lengths, then you're all set, and I'll see you tomorrow.